I wanted to speak about Puerto Rico because when we talk about Puerto Rico, I always say we've been colonized tr twice and they're going in for the third. Can we talk about uh, what you think and your perspective on Puerto Rico becoming a state of the United States of America? Yeah, and let me just, because you said something really important about culture. So I have, I have found that many of us will talk about culture, but not about black politics, right? Mm. And so when I even see all of a sudden, like all these Latino, Latina, Latinx websites, all of a sudden embracing Afro, Black, Latino folks, mm -hmm. you know, that's a brand and marketing campaign. Because right. what, you know, culture is critically important. It's not even separated from politics. But if you're going to write about Bomba y Plena, as I've seen some writings, you have to write about the fact that first in African enslaved communities in the Western hemisphere, drumming was outlawed for a reason. Bomba y Plena is the music and the politics together, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, yo, people are all down to have those conversations, but are you ready to confront your anti-Blackness that we all grew up with in this country? Mm -hmm. But also, are you ready to talk about black freedom as a poll, uh, not a post, but that politics plays a part in that? So around Puerto Rico being a state, it's never going to happen. That's every neoliberal right now is like, oh, we just found out that there were mad Puerto Ricans who can't vote for the president if they live on the island. Puerto Ricans want statehood. It's like, no, no. And not after Hurricane Maria. Not after this new generation right now on the ground in Puerto Rico, including Afro and indigenous Puerto Ricans that have left this country and repatriated back to Puerto Rico. And I point out one sister, she did it eight years ago with her family, uh, the sister Yasmin Hernandez, an mm -hmm. incredible artist in so many ways. I got to meet her when I was a grad student at Cornell. She was an undergrad Jewish student at Cornell. And she made a decision, I think it was eight or nine years ago, to go back to Puerto Rico with her family. And she has documented the struggle, but also the benefits of it. And she's an incredible artist, you know, so I'm, and like if people walk in my house, I have all Latina women artists in my house, Afro Latina women artists in my house. You know, and people are making that decision. Like, honestly, if I had enough money I'd be out at this point from this country. Knowing mm -hmm. that Puerto Rico is still a colony, I'd rather be, be I'd rather be in a place with my people fighting for independence uh, in the way that I can contribute. But, you know, we're never going to be a state. And in fact, Andres Torres, one of the most famous Blaneros, says our star will never fit in the flag. It ain't happening. And it's really being pushed again by neoliberals and people in the Democratic Party that are like, oh, wait, if three million Puerto Ricans can vote, we can win every election. Yeah, you right. could, but then you do nothing for us. Absolutely nothing for us. And we have to be also very careful about who we prop up as our political leaders, like Lin Manuel Miranda and his father. They voted for Promesa, which put Puerto Rico in the bigger debt that than we've ever had. Nidia Velasquez, Jose Serrano, people that are supposed to represent us, they voted for Promesa. And that's why the island is in the economic situation it is. And when the economic situation is so dire, you begin to see the correlation, which we see now, with femicide in Puerto Rico against Puerto Rican women and also trans and queer folks, right? So the poorer a nation is, the more the pathologies take over. So lastly, the Independista Party has to not look like it's looked in the past. All men, mostly light-skinned men, right? And I'm not saying that you can't be light as a Puerto Rican and fight for independence. I'm saying when you're not embracing the totality of who you are and not embracing young people, your movement dies. So yep. I think all of this is happening, which makes, I think, Puerto Rico right now an exciting place to be in culturally, politically, breaking gender norms, 
kicking out governors, removing governors, like, yo, what's happening? And also, lastly, self-determination, that what we've seen post the hurricane is Puerto Ricans really being like, oh, we can never depend on the U.S. government. Yeah, let's grow our own food. There's no reason we should be paying $8 for a gallon of milk. There's no reason we're importing our goods and have to buy them back. And all of that, though, at the end is tied to colonialism. So in, in my heart, I'm an independista, and in my work, I need to do a better job at that. So I received that because, you know, I think that uh, one of the things, one of the most exciting things about this moment in, uh, in time as we make history is embracing the youth and learning from them as well as offering. I'm into that intergenerational uh, exchange because I do believe that we are a village people. That's where we come from. And one of the first things they tried to strip us from, strip from us is that we are a village people. We respect our elders and we respect yeah. our young and we're all imperative to the, to the fight.